Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and I sell used stuff on eBay. Today we're talking about selling sewing machine parts. It's something I part out quite a bit. Um, right now it is the middle of February and we are just over $1,000 in sales in sewing machine parts, so that's really great. I am looking to ramp that up a little bit more this year. I'd like to get around $1,000 a month and basically money coming in as far as sewing machine parts. It's really a goal I wanna try and hit this year. We'll see if we can get there or not. Um, but I'm going to go over today kind of my process, what it looks like, and how you can kind of save some time, because that's kind of a big part of things when you're parting things out. You don't want to spend too much time pulling parts off, and some parts aren't going to sell. Some will, figuring out which ones will and which ones won't. It's pretty hard, but we'll talk about that a little bit as well, how to price your parts so that they do actually sell, and yeah. Lots of different things. Oh, let's talk about buying sewing machines. I buy them quite a bit. My current buy price is $30. I can find them either online, shipped directly to me, or out and about at that price very, very frequently. I'm thinking about actually lowering that price to $25 just because I have a glut of them right now. I think I have like six right now I need to get to, but I am wanting to increase kind of what I'm selling them. So I really just need to get to processing them too. So Thinking that through right now, still leaving my buy price at 30, might drop it to 25, at least temporarily, just, just because I got so many. But anyways, I'm gonna grab one, start taking apart a little bit, showing you what tools I'm using. I'll put a link to all these tools down in the description below because they definitely help me out, save a little bit of time, and yeah, let's get after this. All right, so I'm inside now, all set up. We got everything laid out here. Pick this one out, this is a Kenmore. I'm making a video, Jericho. Oh, oh. cat is going to come say hi. And run away. Anyways, this is Kenmore. It's a 158 point, and then all those crazy numbers. The 158 is really the important part. Those other numbers, I do put them in the listing as well. This is a 12 stitch. Probably won't actually include that in this particular listing. Anyways, I have plugged this thing in with the foot pedal. It works great. This one actually probably could be sold as is. But I believe I'm going to get more money in the long run and have the benefit of not having to shift this gigantic thing by parting it out. So let's kind of go over what all I got here. First off, I got this bag of, or this box of 500 Ziploc bags. I use these to store most of the parts in. And then once they're filled up, they are going to go inside of this bag here. This is the same size bag I use for my clothing inventory system and also the same size box. But I'm going to be filling this bag up with the little bags that have the parts in them, unless it's just some part like this tray that isn't connected to any other part, so it can go in the bag by itself. And then once it's all filled, it goes inside of this box. I can usually fit four or five parted out sewing machines inside of this box. And then I've actually got some like sewing one and two, my first couple of boxes. They've probably got like eight or nine different sewing machines in there because as the parts have sold down, I can then put another giant bag of parts inside of that box. That's kind of my process on storing them. As far as tools go, I got just a little crescent wrench, adjustable wrench. I've then got two sets of Allen wrenches, one metric and one standard, because I don't know what I'm gonna be running into. Hi, you got cards for me? You wanna say hi? Hi. hi. Two sets of Allen wrenches, and then a set of Torx keys. I haven't used these in a while, ever since I got. I've been working on the sewing machine too. You want to work on the sewing machine too? Yeah. Okay, just a minute. Let's do the video first. And this set of Torx keys, I haven't used since I got this because there's more over here now. Can I have one? Yeah, you can have one. Hang on. One just slot set of slip joint pliers, not a big deal. And then I've got these three screwdrivers. He's just gonna take this thing apart for us. Anyways, I got three sets of these Klein screwdrivers. This bigger one has 11 different things it can do. As you can see, you can like pull this out. You've got all sorts of different bits in there. This stubby one only has like seven, but it's smaller and get into smaller places. And then Jericho, can we show people this one? This is like your precision one for really small things. This thing has been very, very handy. And this is a 14 in one. It's got lots of, you can even use it as a nut driver on lots of different things. And with these tools, I'm able to really get everything apart. Oh, and plus just a little box knife you need on hand because sometimes you have to cut some things. 
But anyways, I keep all this and I store it inside of this box so everything is ready to go. We can grab it. And Jericho can, I can just start taking this thing apart. So, anybody here gonna take some parts off of here? What happened? What happened? Oh, put it in there. What are we gonna take off first? Are we gonna take off the top first? Yes. Yes? Yeah. And you want my help or can you do it? You want me to do it? All right, I'm gonna do that and then we'll do more of the video, okay? Okay. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. This one's right there, spot. Yeah, so uh, we got the top cover off and I kind of want to talk about which parts we are looking for the most. Oh. And part of that is parts that wear out and break or parts that if you drop this machine are gonna break off. No. For instance, these spool holders, this bottom winder, if you drop this thing on the top, they're gonna break. The top though is probably not gonna break and I'm actually not going to sell this top cover. I'm gonna take the bobbin winder out, these spool holders out, this little thread guide off, and then I'm just gonna trash this because it's pretty big. It's gonna take up quite a bit of space in my box and the odds of it selling are not gonna be good. It's also just over a pound, which is priority mail. So it's gonna be like eight to $12, depending on where this is going to ship it which really hurts the price. Everything else on here I can ship for like four or five bucks. But the whole top cover is gonna be eight to $12 to ship. And that makes a big difference. So Jericho's taking the back cover off now, which these are lighter, so I do. I got it, You got it, thank you, give me that one. Here. So I do actually sell these back covers. Hey, right here, this one. Oh. That one. Okay. Okay. So I will sell that back cover. I take care of this. So besides parts of that. I yeah, take care of that one. Besides parts that could break off the top, we're also looking for parts that are easily lost, like this down here, this presser foot, easily lost. This is easily broken off the side. Those are the things that we are looking for first. Things that are easily broken and things that are easily lost. So, I'm gonna help him get the back off. He's almost there, and then we're gonna take some more of this apart. We pulled off a bunch of parts here now. This is mostly all coming from the front. Oh, Notice I still have a bunch of parts left on here. I've got the needle rod. Oh, Daddy. I've got the light. Oh. And most of the stuff I've either left because I'm having issues, the screw's stuck in there. So I'm just gonna leave this light, which I actually usually do anyways. Or this needle rod, it's just gonna to take too long to get that thing off there. And that part usually doesn't sell anyway. So I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time I'm trying to get off a part that usually doesn't sell. About. We're making a video. You want to say hi? Hiya. All right. So here are the parts I have pulled off. Needle clamp. These sell all the time. Lots of little pieces to keep together, which is why I'm using those little bags. Here's like the shuttle hook and the ring. I separate these out. Sell them like this. You can put them together. But I do separate them. We got the feed dog. This one had torque screws in it, as you can see but with the smaller screwdriver i use that so i don't even use that little blue thing anymore this is the thread tensioner these are broken quite frequently so you just kind of check them see if they feel good they spin and make sure it doesn't feel like that spring inside of there has broken because that's what happens to them you want those okay you're just got to listen over this kid he's helping today we have this needle throat plate here. These always sell pretty good. And this one's in good condition. A lot of times these get kind of rusty. This one might have one little spot right there. I'll see if I can kind of buff that out, but this one's looking great. Presser foot and the little thumb screw. Ow. You need help? Uh, yeah. What happened? Uh, that one. What is it? That screw. That screw? Uh, we'll get in just a second, okay? Uh, oh. Help. Oh, oh, he dropped the screw in there. No, I'll get that out. Uh, Work on it. Help. Here, let's show them this couple more parts. We got this right here. This is the lever for the presser foot. These sell really good when they're made out of plastic because the plastic ones could oh, potentially break goes, off the side Daddy. here. The metal yeah. ones don't sell as good. Where did where that screw go? I don't know. Did it fall somewhere? Oh, it. We'll have to find it. Front nose cover. These sell really slow, but I still list them because. They can go first class. They don't take up a ton of space in here. And a lot of times, especially if they got these parts on the side here, which I'm just gonna leave on in this case, just because I want to, they do sell. 
And then this is something I don't always sell, but this one came out really easily. This is just the rod for the presser foot and then kind of all the little different parts that go with it. This one came out really easily. I could see that it was not gonna take any time, so I pulled it out. It probably will take forever to sell, but since it came out so easily, unlike the needle rod over here, I could just tell it was gonna to take too long. I pulled it out real quickly. It took like 15 seconds to get that thing out. So now we're gonna move down here. I'm gonna pull out a bunch of parts, move to the back and then the bottom, and then we'll be done. But I'm gonna photograph this stuff, put it in bags before he kicks it off the table. Yeah. All right, we got some parts off the bottom now. Jericho's working on getting the motor off next, so this is the next step. Let's just kind of go over what we got so far. This is like a bottom cover. These don't usually sell great, but I got to pull them off anyway, so I'm taking everything off. So I'm going to go ahead and list it. This is like a little arm also. I need to find that. Yeah, the screw's probably long gone by now. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and list that as well. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Light to ship, so that helps. And it's possible somebody dropped it and broke that. So that's kind of my thought process here. This part doesn't sell great, but it's one screw to take it off. It takes five seconds to get it off. It doesn't take up a lot of space, so I will list it. This right here takes quite a bit of time to get off. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but these sell really good. This is like a bobbin hook. You can't get the motor off. You need my help? Yeah. Okay, just a second. Let me finish these parts. But these sell really good. So that's why I do put a little more time into it. I priced these bobbin hooks and then this part up as well, just a little bit higher because of the time involved. It's just a little cover on the back. I went ahead and grabbed it. Usually don't have those, but we did here. Bottom bobbin. Uh, yeah. Bobbin covers are one of my best selling pieces. You can even sell this clip separately. You can't get the motor off. You gotta use this right here. You need to use the wrench on this one. Here you go. You can't do it. Okay. Real quick. Bobbin cover, great seller. And then this right here, the little clip that holds in the ring. There should be another one here somewhere. There it is. Those as well. So I'm gonna help him get the motor off. He's struggling right now because he's tired. And then take photos of this before he kicks it off the table. And then we got like a handful more parts. We're probably, you're all done? You you're wanna, all done. Do you wanna go play? You're all done. Do we wanna go play for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go play for a little bit. Then we'll get back to this. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Don't throw the screws in there, please. See you guys later, bye. All right, Jericho's jumping now, so I'm gonna start listing the parts we got off. Um, I do want to talk about pricing real quick though. My base pricing for parts on these sewing machines is $17 a piece. And I do plus shipping on that as well. My thought on that is somebody is usually paying $22 or so with shipping and taxes and everything. And to get their sewing machine up and running, I feel like that's a pretty good price for them. Now, if somebody has parted out the same exact machine, which I'll do a search for that. I'll do a search for Kenmore 158 dot, whatever that was, and take a look. I will go in and just underprice them by like a dollar for any parts that they have listed. So hopefully nobody's got as part of this one out. I do sometimes check that before I buy them, especially if I'm buying one online. I've got just a little bit more time and can kind of do some more research. Oh no, oh, no. ew. You can't do chalk on the trampoline. Ew, go jump, okay? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> if somebody has the parts listed, I underprice them by about a dollar just so mine will sell first. But if not, I'm pricing them at $17 plus shipping, except for a few specific parts, that being like the bobbin hook that I talked about. Also the motors, the motors I price at $25. Hang on, let me help him with the zipper. The trampoline zipper that is. Anyways. The motors are priced at $25 plus, padded flat rate shipping, and then pretty much everything else is at that $17 mark unless I'm underpricing somebody else. So that's how I do my pricing on them. Some things will have priority mail shipping, but I don't think we had any on this machine in particular. Most things will go four ounce or five ounce. Um, a few of the things like that little extra bottom 
extender tray cover thing. There'll be a 12 ounce tray, but everything else, sorry about that. It's gonna be at four ounces. So I'm gonna start listing that. It's really, really fast. All right, so somehow I lost the last clip where I finished everything up and gave a little recap, but I'm just gonna go from the rest of it now. So all in time, really hard to judge on this one because I had Jericho helping me out and that definitely changes things up. We played on the trampoline for a little bit in the swing in between there, but I would say just over an hour, honestly, if it was just me in this situation is where I would have been today. That's listing, taking apart, Whoa. photos, everything. Um, let's see how many listings, 24 listings, $368. Will all those parts sell? Absolutely not. They definitely won't all sell in the first year, even the first two or three years, but they will sell a bunch of them. Not all of them, but a bunch of them. And we will definitely have sales within these next couple of months, within the first year. And it's gonna keep selling for the next several years. And that's a big part of this is it's kind of creating a slow stream of income that's gonna keep going and going and going. But yeah, making some good money today, I feel like. I'm happy with this. Um, let me know what you guys think. If there's something you wanna do, this does not seem like it's for you. You gotta have space to store these parts after you're done. You gotta be patient. If you're worried that one of these parts hasn't sold and it's been a year and you've still got all the parts left, this isn't for you, okay? You really gotta be very patient, wait on these parts, wait for the right buyer. Lowering the price isn't really gonna help unless somebody has undercut your price because really what you're selling isn't the part. What you're selling is somebody's ability to be able to repair a sewing machine that's important to them and they're willing to pay $25 for that. The part that you're selling is not really what you're selling. What you're selling is the repair. So, something to think about. That's my philosophy on it, why I price things the way I do, and I don't really drop the price on these unless I happen to notice somebody's underpricing me, but I'm not checking that usually. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you like this, go ahead and subscribe. More great content coming out soon, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.